this is Vaishnavi from Edureka and I welcome you to this session on Android SDK tutorial. But before we get started, let's take a look at the agenda for today's topic. First of all, I'll be talking about what is the Android SDK, followed by which we'll take a look at the installation process where you'll understand how to install Android SDK on your system. Next, I'll be discussing the most amazing features of this Android SDK. And also we'll take a look at the SDK tools that are present and finally I'll wrap up this session by walking you guys through how exactly Android SDK manager works. So I hope the agenda was clear to you guys and I also suggest you to subscribe to Edureka YouTube channel to never miss out any updates on the trending technologies and hit the bell icon to never miss any notifications on this channel. So let's begin software development kit that is SDK. This is basically a collection of software development tools in one installable package. So this SDK that is the software development kit is also used with Android which helps to download the tools the latest versions of Android available and many more. So this video on Android SDK tutorial will help you guys learn about how to work with Android SDK. So what is the Android SDK? Every time Google releases a new version of a software or an update corresponding SDK will also be released with that. So in order to work with Android the developers must download or install each version's SDK for the particular device. Now say for example if you have a OnePlus phone. So uh, OnePlus has a set of SDK files in it. So this will differ from one system to another. So when OnePlus releases a new version of Android that is now every other device is working on Android 9. Once it updates to 10 every other system will be updated. Now OnePlus 7 has Android 10 in it. Now if the OnePlus community releases the Android version for every other devices of OnePlus. This is where SDK comes into picture. So this SDK is basically a tool using which you can install every other update that you get. Okay, like I mentioned the Android SDK is a set of development tools that is used to develop applications for the Android platforms and also this SDK provides a selection of tools that are required to build the Android applications and also ensures that the process goes as smoothly as possible. Now whether you create an application using a Java Kotlin C sharp and many more. You need to have SDK in order to run it on any Android device. So you can use an emulator in order to test the application that you've built or you can just use an IDE to perform an action. Now talking about IDEs, nowadays people prefer using Android Studio and also IntelliJ in order to develop any Android application. So this Android SDK also comes bundled with the Android Studio. That is the integrated development environment where the work gets done and many of the other tools are now best accessed or managed. So Android Studio is one such platform or ID which gives you all the other advantages like using the Android SDK which is inbuilt. So Android Studio helps you deal with it easily. Now talking about IntelliJ, IntelliJ also provides libraries and also SDKs but the thing is we are not going to be using IntelliJ in this session. We are going to be focusing on Android Studio because it is easy to access the SDK files over here. So we'll be using Android Studio and also do note that you can download the Android SDK independently. Uh, if you're not going to be using an ID like Android Studio or IntelliJ, you can just download the versions of Android SDK on your system. Now the next question that you might ask is how to install this Android SDK on your system. So installing SDK is very simple guys. All you need to do is like I mentioned have an ID where you can perform all the actions all the testing coding creating debugging everything will be done in this ID. So all you need to have is Android Studio. So once you have this Android Studio installed in your system you're good to go. So this is the step one guys you need to install Android Studio on your system. I've given a few instructions over here just follow them. And there is also another video which is put up uh, by Edureka that is uh, how to install Android Studio on your system. So just go through it before you can go ahead with the session. And the step two is where uh, you get the welcome page of Android Studio. So let me just quickly walk you guys through it. 
I'll show you how exactly you can access this Android SDK. Yeah, you can see that it is loading my application because I already have Android Studio installed in my system. So this is uh, another small project which I was working on. So I'm going to go to file, go to close project. Yeah, so this is what I wanted. So this is the welcome page of Android Studio guys. So all you need to do is go to configure here. You can see that there is SDK manager present over here. So just click on it. And you'll be given a set of options that is what which Android version that you want to work on. That is Android 10, 9, 8, 7. There's so many versions like from the beginning. There's so many other versions which are available, which is the Android SDK platforms. And uh, there are tools and also there are uh, some sites. So the current version that I've selected is Android 10 because 10 is the latest version available right now. So I'm going to use 10 in this case. So this is how you can access the Android SDK platform. Click on OK. Now another way to do this is go to new project, go to empty project and click on next. I'm going to give this as. So I'm going to name this as SDK tutorial. And you can see that you can select either Java or Kotlin. I'm going to be using Java in this case and the API level is the same. So do not change anything over here. Just click on finish. Yeah, you can see that the project is created and it is syncing to Gradle. So let's just wait till it's done. So you can see that uh, the main activity code is present over here. So for zoom in and zoom out, you need to add your own shortcuts. All right. I already have the shortcut added. So the question is how to install Android SDK over here. So once you've opened it, how do you install it? Like I mentioned, Android SDK is bundled with Android Studio. So all you need to do is just go to tools and you can select the SDK manager over here, which will again bring you back to the same page. Now cancel this and another way to access this is there's a symbol over here. I think you guys can see this. This symbol over here, which is next to search button is the SDK manager. Just click on it and it will direct you to this page and just click on cancel because the Android version is already selected. So this is exactly how you can install or I might say access Android SDK on your system. Now that you guys have understood how to access or install Android SDK, let's move ahead and take a look at the features of Android SDK. Android SDK has a lot of amazing features like I mentioned. I've tried to list a few of them. So I've tried to gather more information about Android SDK features. So here we go. SDK helps in dynamically downloading the maps for more than 190 countries in over 60 languages. So this is something really cool about this, right? You can also view these maps offline. So this is actually an added advantage of using Android SDK. Also dealing with the map styles and the touch gesture is also improvised. So this is also quite interesting, right? So this SDK also has the ability to render raster tiles and map objects interleaved within different map layers. So this is something extraordinary, right? Android SDK has this feature of offline mapping. So using which we can actually download the maps even if you don't have the internet connection. So now talking about the next feature we have dynamic markers. So in the previous versions of under SDK you could not have moved the position without a fallback or re-adding the icon. In the latest version or the latest edition you can update the position of the icon dynamically. Okay, so this is also one of the important uses of Android SDK. So dynamic markers are also included in the current versions of Android. Now talking about the next feature we have improvised API compatibility. With the latest release that is Android Q, it is much easier to migrate from the Google Maps Android API. Now Google Maps is present in every other phone like it's become a basic need for a human being. You want to go out somewhere just check for traffic. You need maps in order to check for the traffic. If you want to go somewhere and you don't know the route to take, you don't know how exactly to go there, you use Google Maps. And also migrating from the Google Maps API is not very easy. So using this Android SDK, it is very easy to migrate from the Google Maps API. 
So these are some of the features which are very interesting guys now that you've understood the major features of Android SDK. Let's move ahead and take a look at the SDK tools which play a major role in Android development. Now talking about SDK tools. Android SDK tools is a component for the Android software development kit. This includes a set of development and debugging tools for Android. This SDK tools are also included with the Android Studio so you don't have to install or download them from Google or any other website. Android comes up with the revised version every now and then and the latest release is the SDK tools that is in the year 2017 that is called a revision 26.1.1. So this is the latest SDK version tool that we are going to be using. So in this release they've made a few changes and I've noted down two of them and that is a command line version of the APK analyzer has been added to the tools.bin.com apk analyzer folder so in this folder you can find the command line version of the apk analyzer now what is the use of this so this actually offers the same features as the apk analyzer in the android studio and it can also be integrated into build ci servers and some scripts for tracking size regressions generating reports and many more so this is another feature which is added to this sdk tools all right now the next change is the ProGuard rules that are under the tools.proguard folder are no longer used by the Android plugin for Gradle. What is a ProGuard? ProGuard is a free Java class like Shrinker, Optimizer and Pre-Verifier. It detects and removes unused class, fields, methods and attributes. So this ProGuard is no longer used by the Android plugin for Gradle. All right. So these are the changes with the latest update now talking about the SDK tools. These are generally platform independent and are required no matter which Android platform that you're currently working on. There are a set of tools that get installed automatically when you install Android Studio. So here are a few of them uh, that is Android. So this tool uh, lets you manage the AVD that is Android virtual device and also the projects the install components of the SDK. We also have an emulator which helps you test your applications without using a physical device that is any external device. We also have ProGuard. ProGuard is not used but yeah, we use ProGuard which is actually inbuilt. So this helps in shrinking, optimizing and obscures your code by removing unused code. We also have DDMS that is a Dalvik debug monitor service. Okay, what does DDMS tool do? So DDMS lets you debug your Android applications and we also have Android debug bridge that is ABD. This is a versatile command line tool that helps you communicate with an emulator instance or connected Android power device. So these are the tools which we'll be using or which is currently in use. Now that you've understood the tools also let's move ahead to the last topic of this session where you'll understand about Android SDK manager. In order to download and install the latest Android APIs and the development tools from the internet, Android helps us by having the Android SDK manager. So this manager separates the API tools and different platforms into different packages which you can download. And also do note that the SDK manager comes with the Android SDK bundle. You cannot download this separately. So this is exactly how Android SDK works. So with this we come to the end of this session on Android SDK tutorial. I hope you guys have understood everything that has been discussed in this session. And if you have any queries or doubts related to any of the topics, feel free to reach out to us. Just mention them in the comment section below and we'll reply to you at the earliest. And also if you want to give us any suggestions like what you want to learn about Android more. Just put them in the comment section below and we'll try to bring it up to you in the next sessions. All right. So thank you for watching this video. Happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.